going to do a little bit of work with you on momentum. And uh, just so you feel like you're in class, I'm actually cleaning the board off for you. Isn't that good? And just so you feel at home, I'm having trouble finding a whiteboard marker. Ah, there I So, um, your principle of conservation of momentum is that um, in, a, in an isolated or closed system, that's one in which energy is not being added. So, there's an isolated system, we, we're not adding energy to it. Energy, nah, that doesn't happen. And also, energy doesn't leave it. Nah, no energy lost. So, with, with an isolated system, delta E equals zero. The total energy of that system is constant. Have a bit of a think about what the uh, smallest isolated system is in the universe. I'll come back to that at some point. So, in an isolated system, delta P equals zero. Delta, the change in momentum, or delta MV is equal to zero. That's why momentum is such an important concept, because it's the one thing which is always the same in any in any interaction. And we're normally looking at a system in which uh, uh, bodies interact. So uh, we normally say that the momentum before, P before an interaction, equals P after an interaction. So if we had um, two bodies, M1, U1, that's the mass of the first body and its initial velocity, plus M to U2 must equal M1V1 plus M2V2. The sum of the momentum before equals the sum of the momentum after. The sum of the momenta after. Okay, so let's have a little look. Then we've got an object. Let's say it's uh, just to make it easy one kilogram. It's moving along at uh, four meters per second. And it hits a stationary object of mass two kilogram. And we want to find out what happens. So um, let's assume that uh, we, we don't know what happens to the one kilogram body. Uh, we give that um, V1, U initial V final. And let's suppose that we somehow measure that the two kilogram body moves off at a velocity at one meter per second. So what's V1? So we have that um, P before equals P after. Uh, therefore, one times four plus zero, no momentum of this one, equals one times V1, one V1, plus two times one, plus two times one. Therefore, four equals V1, plus two, therefore V1 equals two meters per second. Um, to the right, it's a vector quantity. Remember, vector, uh, momentum is a vector quantity, and so therefore it um, has to have a direction. <coughs> so, you see that? I don't need to give you time to copy that down because you've got a video and you can play it back 100 times. I'm sure to hear my melodious voice and to see my face, you'll want to play that stacks. Let's have a look at now a one kilogram object going this way at five meters per second, hitting a two kilogram object coming this way at four meters per second, and we have a little crash. Then what happens? Well, let's suppose the one kilogram body shoots off this way now at one meter a second. Um, what happens to the two kilogram? Well, I'm going to assume it goes that way, V, V2. Um, that's M1, M2. So, what's the momentum before? P before equals P after. Therefore, 1 times 5 minus 2 times 4 equals 1 times 1 plus 2v2. So, 1 times 5 is 5 minus, times 4 is 8, equals 1 plus 2v2. Uh, therefore, minus 3 
in the second one over minus one which equals two v two therefore v two equals minus two meters per second if we go that way it comes this way somehow it's, i've probably given you one that um, really can't quite happen but if it did happen this would have to come back this way at two meters per second okay any questions uh, how about you um, email me in any questions you've got and we'll discuss them. I'm going to try to do a live session in just a moment as well, so we'll see how that goes.